All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about Taylor's inequality. And Taylor's inequality um, is stated here as follows, so I'll let you read it. Um, I'm sure if you're taking, if you're looking at this, you've got a calculus book nearby. So basically, Taylor's inequality, you can do a couple things with it. Um, one thing is you're coming up with these Taylor series expansions for different functions. Not all functions have Taylor series um, expansions that are valid. So one thing that Taylor series does is it gives you a condition upon which that Taylor series expansion actually does represent the function. And basically what you have to do is you use the inequality and show that the, uh, as n goes to infinity that this remainder ends up going to zero. The other thing is you can actually just use it as a it'll give you a bound on your error for certain cases of when you're computing these Taylor polynomials. So for the first one, um, so let's show that cosine of x, here's the uh, Taylor series representation for cosine of x. Let's show that this is actually valid for cosine of x for all values of x. Okay, so again, the idea is we have to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of the remainder equals zero. So in this case, this is actually a Maclaurin series, which means we have an a value of 0. So in Taylor's inequality, I'm just replacing the x minus a with x minus 0 to come up with this. So now we have to bound um, kind of the generic remainder. So one thing to notice here is if your function simply is cosine of x, no matter what derivative you're at, you're either going to get positive or negative cosine of x, or you'll simply get um, that the nth derivative is going to be positive or negative sine x. Okay. In either case, though, what we have to do is it says that, where'd my sheet go? We have to bound um, the n plus first derivative at any number of x, we have to bound that above by some number m. Well, if you think about it, if the n plus, if, if the nth derivative, if any derivative is either sine or cosine, well, the n plus first derivative evaluated at any number is always going to be less than or equal to 1 because, well, the biggest number you get out of cosine or sine is always 1 if you take the absolute value of that. So what we end up with is we have that by our Taylor's inequality, okay, so we've got our m value, it's bounded by 1, then we have n plus 1 factorial, and our x to the n plus first power is still in there. If you take the limit as n goes to infinity of this, the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of our remainder, that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. Again, our goal is to show that this limit is zero. We have the absolute value of x to the n plus first power over n plus one factorial. Well, if you think about it, no, no, no matter what value x is, um, you've got x raised to an exponent, or you'll have a number raised to an exponent. Okay, so n's going to infinity, so certainly the top is going off to infinity. But this bottom, this factorial, you can actually show that factorials grow much faster than any exponential function. So in fact, it turns out that this limit does equal zero. And since, by, since we've shown now that the limit as n goes to infinity of this r sub n of x equals zero, we've now basically justified that this Maclaurin or Taylor series representation for cosine of x is actually valid for all values of x. Okay, so this is kind of an easy one because the value on top, m, well, again, the derivative is easy to bound. It's always smaller than 1. Um, and then it's just a matter of taking this limit. So maybe this, uh, this, fact, this, this limit might confuse you a little. I encourage you to pick a value for x and to start computing this limit and to actually convince yourself that this turns out to be 0. So let me do one other one here. <clears throat> So here I'm going to actually do a numerical one. So suppose that f of x is the function x to the 2 thirds power. 
Okay, so our function is x to the two-thirds. We're going to center this at the value a equals 1, and we're going to let values of x range between 0.8 and 1.2. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the third degree Taylor polynomial for this function centered at a equals 1. And then I'm going to use Taylor's inequality to estimate how close this um, third degree Taylor polynomial will actually be if we use any value between 0.8 and 1.2 compared to just actually plugging in that normal value and then raising it to the two-thirds power. Alright, so the first thing you would have to do, well, is come up with the third degree Taylor polynomial. So let me see if I can't do that real quick. So again, our first function, f of x, that's just x to the two-thirds. Our first derivative is going to be two-thirds x to the negative one-third. Our second derivative is going to be, it looks like, negative two-ninths x to the negative four-thirds. Our third derivative is going to be positive eight over twenty-seven x to the negative seven-thirds. And then our fourth derivative is going to give us negative 56 over 81 x to the negative 10 thirds. Okay, so here I'm just taking derivatives to come up with a Taylor polynomial. So I'm leaving out all the gory details, but you can look at um, the formula for this on the other video if you need to see how to come up with a Taylor polynomial. So if you plug 1 into the original function, you'll simply get 1. If you plug 1 into the first derivative, you come up with the value of just 2 thirds. If you plug 1 into the second derivative, you're going to end up simply with negative 2 ninths. If you plug 1 into the third derivative, you're going to come up with the value 8 over 27. And it says, so this is going to help me come up, these values are going to help me come up with the third degree Taylor polynomial. I'm going to use this last part to actually figure out um, my error because it says you need the n plus first derivative which in this case would be the fourth derivative. Alright so if I write out my Taylor polynomial it says x to the two-thirds is roughly equal to it'll be one plus my first derivative two-thirds x minus one raised to the first power minus two-ninths over two factorial x minus 1 raised to the second power. And then I'll have plus my third derivative evaluated at 1, which is 8 over 27, divided by 3 factorial, and then x minus 1 cubed. So we can simplify this down. This is just going to be 1 plus 2 thirds x minus 1 minus 1 ninth x minus 1 squared, and then we'll have plus 4 over 81 x minus 1 to the third power. So there's our third degree Taylor polynomial. Okay, so the next part we need to do is to compute the error on this. So one thing I'm going to have to do here, so it says the third degree Taylor the error in using the third degree Taylor polynomial is at most going to be this value m over the n plus first factorial, which is 4 factorial, times x minus 1 raised to the fourth power. What we have to do is we have to make this value m as large as possible, and we also have to make this value x minus 1 to the fourth power as large as possible. Again, but we're using values of x between 0.8 and 1.2, so this is the thing that you have to bear in mind. Well, you can make, if you take values for x in the interval 0.8 to 1.2, you'll always get the absolute value of x minus 1 to the fourth. Well, the largest you can make the inside is 0.2 raised to the fourth power and 0.2 raised to the fourth power turns out to be just 0 0.0016 and then likewise the m plus first derivative so the fourth derivative at x we said that that was negative 56 over 81 x to the ten thirds 
To make this as large as possible, we would want to make the denominator of the fraction as small as possible. So we would want to put in the value 0.8 raised to the 10 thirds. And now if we compute all this, it simply says that the third degree Taylor polynomial, the, the error on that is going to be at most our 56 over 81 times 0.8 raised to the negative 10 thirds power all over 4 factorial and then we'll have to multiply this by our 0 0.0016 and here we end up getting the number 0 0.00009697 so sorry for this fast part here at the end I'm out of time I hope this helps let me know if you have any other questions